To worship God means to love him most. Only true repented people worship God. On the other hand, all the sinners, all unrepented people, unbelievers, they all worship the devil. To believe means to repent, to act upon the word of God, to have the sense of having the life which Christ has given you, and to act upon it. Our lesson today is eternal life, the nature of God. Eternal life, the nature of God. As many as believed in him have eternal life. Eternal life is the nature of God that is imparted to your spirit at the new birth. The nature of God, divine nature, that is imparted to your spirit to replace the old nature, that satanic nature that he had. So by replacing it with the, with the life of God, man becomes a new creation. And that this eternal life, or the word of God, or the word of eternal life, is not that, or the new birth, is not a change of spirit. It's not that God is going to change your spirit. It is not even your natural life. Your life as a fallen man. Being carried to the highest perfection. For you to have this life. There is nothing you can do to have the life. God has given to you. It is divine nature that is brought down from heaven. And imparted to the heart of the fallen man. That is why this eternal life is a gift. It is God's own nature that had been brought down from heaven and had been communicated to you and imparted to your heart so that by hearing, knowing, and believing, you might have this eternal life. Jesus told Nicodemus that except you are born again, you will not enter into the kingdom of God. That is to say, except this life is imparted to your spirit. You cannot go in. And what explanation did he give? He said, um, except you are born of water and of the spirit. The water has to do with your flesh. It has to do with the cleansing. It has to do with the renewing. It has to do with the transfiguration of the body through baptism and actually through being convinced of the truth and presenting your body as a living sacrifice to God, that's going to be reflected in your, according to your conviction in the way you make use of the body. That's why Jesus is putting it in that way. Except you are born of water, you repent and you are baptized. And when you baptize, by coming out from the water, the old man, is, is all your sins are buried there. You come out as a new person. But that is, not, that, is not, that is not all. That you must truly be born spirit. You must truly be born of the spirit. And Jesus told that John 6, 6, John 6, 63. That the flesh profit nothing. That actually what I have come to do is to reawaken man's spirit. And this awakening has to come through the words that I speak. Because the words that I speak to you, they are the spiritual life. And they are the truth about your life. And so, everything about this world, which Christ has brought to us, is about this eternal life we are talking about. And that is why Jesus himself, that is the word of God, is a model of eternal life itself. And that is why God brought him, that through him we might have eternal life. Now, what the sinner needs is eternal life. What fallen man needs is eternal life that will enable him to approach God with boldness, approach him with confidence, God as a father 
without sense of guilt. When you have eternal life, you have divine nature. You have the nature of God. And with that nature, you can approach God and speak to him as a beloved father without sin consciousness, sense of guilt, or inferiority complex. Sinners cannot approach God because of inferiority complex. They are tormented in the presence of God because of the sins they have committed. But the one that has eternal life is sin free because he has divine nature. Is in the form of God. Has the same nature with God. And with that nature, he can now stand in the presence of God without fear, without sin consciousness, without sense of guilt. And he and God can live, can live together as beloved father and son. And so, um, eternal life is what we need so that our old man, the old nature, the nature of devil, which the fallen man has, has to be taken away and eternal life has to be imparted to him to make him a new creature. John 20, 30 and 31. And many other signs did Jesus, truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that we might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. Jesus came as a superman. And here, the Bible is telling us that many signs and wonders did Jesus, which they are written. There is no book that contains them. But these ones are written that we might know, we might believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And believing we might have eternal life. Now, what does that mean? Praise the living God. Um, our chance of having eternal life lies on we knowing him, we hearing about him, we believing in Jesus. We have not understood the meaning of hearing, the meaning of knowing, the meaning of believing. We have thought of this life in terms of a complex operation that God is to do in our spirits to transform us to a kind of new spirit. And so we are waiting for when such operation has to be performed. You don't even know that the life is given to you already. And so we cannot receive it because we don't know that the life is given to us already. Receiving Jesus is an act of the will, acting on the word of God. It is your own personal decision according to your understanding, according to your determination, according to your conviction, after you may have heard about him, then you become convinced that yes, from the account of the scriptures, Jesus truly is the son of God that came from heaven. Now, today, if a message is brought to you that God is bringing somebody from heaven to earth. The whole world will be moved, will be excited, waiting for the day he will appear. But if this is a reality that God has brought his son from heaven, go and see him. I tell you, the whole world will be moved with excitement. But that this is what God has done. But we are going to see him by faith. We are going to accept him by faith. And everything about him is written in this book called Bible. That by reading and knowing that he truly came. And that that Jesus of Nazareth that came truly is the son of God. And that he is the savior of the world. And that he, it is him that, that has brought this eternal life which all along we are waiting for, by being convinced that Jesus is the person we now know 
that what he did is enough to convince us that, that the life is made available to us already. And that by believing, we might have and our life. Praise the living God. And so, how do we now believe? You are going to believe, you are going to accept him as your savior. You are not going to accept him as the one that will save you. That is going to be in the future. You are going to accept the fact that he has saved you already. It's led for you to accept the fact of it. You either accept the fact of you having been saved or you reject it or you doubt or you, you, you refuse to believe because the work is done already and what he did is for you. So you are going to accept the fact that you have been saved from your sins and if you know of that fact then you are no longer meant to be a sinner. You are, you are no more to walk as a sinner because you have been saved from your sins. And secondly, you are going to confess him as your Lord. You are going to confess him as your Lord. To take him as your Lord means you are going to allow him to supervise your life. You are going to allow him supervise your life. One man will ask us the question, how do we have eternal life? And what writer puts down is this John 20, 30, 31. That all these are done that we might believe that he is the one and that by believing we have eternal life. Even when Jesus was on earth, he told the Pharisees that you might not come and believe in me and have this life. And he said, this is life eternal. He calls himself the, the eternal life. It is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will give us an understanding of this eternal life which Jesus stands for. So that we can embrace Jesus who is our life and we have it. That is why the Holy Spirit is our teacher, our guide and comforter. To enable us identify, to, to enable us know, to enable us be convinced of this life that we might have it. And that is why he's the teacher, the guide, the comforter, and everything that we need that will enable us be convinced and have this life is what the Holy Spirit is to do for us. Praise our living God. Now, um, we are going to have this eternal life by hearing and believing in Jesus. By hearing and believing in Jesus. Now, what does that hearing mean? When you hear the message that the Bible makes us know that every sound you hear has its own meaning. Any sound that does not make meaning to you it's unprofitable. You are a barbarian. But we should be able to identify the message. Whether truly this message is from God or not. Because it is in this message that God has brought to us that we might have eternal life. Hearing means understanding. If you have not understood, it means you have not heard. Like Christ said, your ears are, are, are dull of hearing. Their hearts are closed. Your ears, they are deaf. But even through the prophets, God said, I am going to open the ears of the deaf and that the deaf even will hear this word of, of eternal life. And even the blind shall see. That is to say, God has prepared to break through the limitation that man has. Everything that is a covering to man, God is willing to break it to make man have access to this world of eternal life. So that you, not hear, you, you, you will not just hear it and keep it aside. The word comes with power. Hearing means understanding. That is to say, God has brought to us an understanding of what we are going to do to be free. 
And except we have that understanding, the purpose of the gospel will never be achieved. God has brought an understanding of what we are going to do to escape the corruption that is in the world. He has given, he has brought to us an understanding through his own word of eternal life that we might act upon it and be saved from the corruption that is in the world. So, if you hear and you do not understand, you cannot believe because believing means acting upon the word of God. Believing means being changed suddenly. Being changed instantaneously. Being changed by, by hearing, by understanding. You are not, your heart has changed. Look at the, that divine nature or eternal life or regeneration is divine life brought down from heaven and imparted to the heart of the fallen man to make him become a new creation. The new birth is not a change of spirit. Your spirit is as you are. It's still there. But God said, I will own even the body. I will not have it. This one that comes from me, I will have it back. So the blood of Jesus cleanses your spirit and remove everything the devil put in your spirit to make you become so limited, hold you in the prison yard of spiritual death and to rule your life. But once your spirit is delivered and cleansed, your spirit is in no man, is still in no man's land because without eternal life being given to him, devil can still overthrow. And so, um, and these words of eternal life, God did not just pour from heaven your spirit because the problem that happened in this world was committed by the body. Adam ate the fruit that God commanded him not to eat. He ate it physically. And in spirit he died. <clears throat> because the body and the spirit are joined, they are connected together. And whatever you do in the body what is what is going to affect your spirit. And that is why even in the judgment, we shall give account of the things we do in the body. And so without the body being put under subjection, this life cannot come in. So God has to pass through the medium of the body, through the senses. And that is why hearing comes in. Hearing comes in. And so by hearing the word of God that is preached to you, the agape love that is preached to you, the understanding that God has given to you concerning the wisdom of his love, concerning the love life, concerning agape love, Concerning the grace, the way it operates, the way God demonstrated, and expecting you also to, to follow it so that you'll be able to forgive, you, you'll be able to be like Him. This word, this word, this is the word of eternal life. By you hearing, and the moment you become convinced that through what Christ has done, your sin issue is resolved. And this, this word of eternal life I'm hearing, that this is my life. This is the life God has given to me. This life is not for the flesh. It is for your spirit. But without your flesh acting upon it, your spirit will not have it. Even if your spirit has it, the moment you allow your flesh to act, to walk on the moment you allow your body to walk contrary, the same life which you have in spirit can now go away once more. And so there is no way this life will come in without the cooperation of the body. And so that receiving eternal life is an act of the will. It is you that will be convinced of this life. And it is you that will now know that this is the life God has given to me not that God will give you. This is the life God has given to me. So I'm going to live according to, this, according to this life which God has given me. And that those who become convinced that the, their life is their own 
and they begin to live the life as their own life. Blessed are those who hunger and taste for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Those who believe, who believe that the life is given to them already. The sin issue is resolved. All the past sins they committed in the past, God has waved them off. God is doing this to destroy sin consciousness. He is doing this to destroy inferiority complex. To destroy that sense of guilt that hinders you from approaching him. By believing that sin consciousness is gone. You have boldness. You have it is not when God say, even the Bible told us, who is it that condemneth when God has justified? Nobody can condemn you because you are justified. And it's not even your duty to begin to recall all the sins you committed in the past and feel those things are still there for you to be guilty before God. That is unbelief. That is you are saying that Christ is to see you. That mind is to suggest that you are yet to be saved. That God has declared his righteousness to justify or his righteousness to forgive the sins that are past. The sins that are past. You have problem with God when after you have believed and you decide to walk like the old man, that is when you have a problem with God. But as far as the work of redemption is concerned, God has brought the ways of eternal life that we might act upon and be free from the corruption that is in the world. Because without you acting upon it, the life is yet to become your own. But by acting upon it, you are showing you are fit, you are showing um, your conviction, you are telling God now, I, you are now appreciating, telling God, I thank you for this life you have given me. I am putting on the garment. I am walking in it. This is my life. And look at Romans 10, 9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, this agrees with that John 20, 30, 31. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That many things, many signs did Jesus but these are written that we might know that he is son of God. And by believing, we might have eternal life. And here he's saying, if you cannot, you cannot confess him, if you have not believed in your heart. And verse 10 said, For with the heart man believed unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. With the heart, with the heart you have, that conviction of this life that is given to you. With the heart, you have that faith of you being made the righteousness of God. With the heart, you have the conviction of your sin issue being resolved. With the heart, you have the conviction of that gift, of what God worked out for you as a gift, so that you can freely come back to him and live with him in his house. With the heart, you have the understanding of the way of escape. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. You cannot go to God except you follow this way. So, with the heart, by believing, means by being changed through the word of God. By being renewed through the word of God. That is to say the, the life has had. The life has come into your heart and your heart represents your spirit. And so this word, through your heart, is now becoming the life of your spirit. So we are born again by the word of God. By hearing, by believing, we are changed, we are transformed, we are renewed, we are born again, we are recreated. 
And that is why without the Holy Spirit, no preacher of the gospel can save anybody. Because the word, it has to work in partnership with the Holy Spirit. And as he is talking, expounding, explaining the scripture, the Holy Spirit is doing the work. The Holy Spirit is convincing you, like as written in that John um, 16. Praise the Lord. That the work of the Holy Spirit is to, con is to convict you so that you have the realization. So that you can have the understanding to enable you believe. That is to enable you act upon it. Until you act, you are not a believer. The believing unbelievers also believe that Jesus is their savior. They believe that they have been saved from their sins. But what they do not believe is that they do not believe that they have been made righteous. They do not believe that that God has made them his own, his own righteousness in Christ in the world. So when it comes to the truth they're supposed to believe, they deny it. That is the light of knowledge. They deny it. They say, I'm not righteous. It is not your duty to go about telling people you are right. You are not to judge yourself. But this is to be in your heart. And that is the confidence you have that enables you to approach God. If you are guilty, you can't approach him. The evil man runneth when no man pursueth. You are no longer guilty because of what Christ did for you. That if one man dies for our sin, we are all considered dead. And if we are paid the price of our sin, then we are no more sinners. And what is left for us is from that day, let us repent. Let us repent. Let us show that genuine change to appreciate what God has done so that what God has given us can remain. Without you acting upon the word, it means you are rejecting the life. It means you don't believe. You doubt. You don't have it. And that by believing, you might have eternal life. It is not a situation where a complex operation is taking place in your spirit where the Holy Spirit is doing some here, is turning to light, is doing some here. It's the same spirit you have that is now being cleansed through deliverance. Your spirit is now being healed through deliverance. The nature of devil is being removed through, through deliverance. But then, you, by you acting upon the word of God, you are making your spirit to act upon the word of God because that is his life. That is the original life. And that the word is God. That is, he is now becoming, you are making him become the image and likeness of God once more. And when, when this life enters your spirit, it unites your spirit with God. It makes your spirit and God become one. As Christ and God are one. So that you, Christ and God are one. God can flow through him. Christ can act. God can act through him. And that's why the Holy Spirit is always there with him. Because wherever such being exists, the Holy Spirit must be there. May you all know the truth and let the truth set you free in Jesus' name. Praise the living God.